Today we're going to discuss Jodan no Kamae, Posta di Donna von Tag. In this video we'll talk about why it's actually one of my favorite. Not my favorite, but one of my favorite. And I'll talk about both advantages and disadvantages, pros and cons of this ready position, according, of course, to my humble opinion. Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking, right to the point, why do I like Jodan no Kamae? Well, Jodan no Kamae, as we know, is one of the possible stances in Kendo, Kenjutsu, but we, do, we also have very similar stances in other systems, meaning, namely, the German longsword system and Fiore dei Liberi's Flos Duellatorum and other treatises from Northern Italian styles. Now, although there are some differences between the way you perform a Jodan no Kamae in Kendo and the way you perform, you have a Jodan, or assume a Jodan no Kamae in Kenjutsu, and I will discuss these in this video, I will try to show you uh, what I understand. Please keep in mind, I'm no master. I have three years of Kendo, a little bit of experience in Kenjutsu, but I am not a master. Uh, and my knowledge of Hima is purely academical, but I'm just, I'm not teaching. I'm sharing what I know about these things. I'm very happy to be corrected if it's the case, but I'm just sharing my opinions on these. So why do I like Jodan no Kamae? Well, as I said, Jodan no Kamae is one of my favorites. So let, let's discuss it very quickly. The reason why I like Jodan no Kamae is because it makes me feel actually quite safe. And this might sound strange or odd, because the first thing that people think, uh, including me, when the first time I saw a Jodan no Kamae is, well, hold on a minute, he's holding the sword on top of his head. Isn't he, isn't his body completely exposed? So how can you feel safe in a uh, stance position which actually looks to be all about offense and has nothing as far as defense is concerned. Well, I'll have to counter that because I think that it is a, a defensive stance as well as an offensive stance. It has a different way and it's defending other parts of your body than the, for example, Chuda no Kamae or Segan Gamae. So let's examine the uh, Kamae first of all. So it's called, as we said, Jodan no Kamae, but you can also pronounce it Jodan Gamae. So, the way it's done, now if we consider the, this is how I do my Chudan no Kamae, and again, feel free to correct me if you see that I do something wrong, but this is how I assume my Chudan no Kamae. As you can see, my shoulders are relaxed, I keep my left hand at the same height as my navel, roughly speaking one fist of distance from my body. My right hand is in the same position as it would be if I were to uh, give a handshake to someone. As far as my grip is concerned, I do use Toraguchi and uh, I sort of make a V-shape with my hands when I hold my shinai, although I, I'm sort of against this uh, way of holding the shinai. I prefer, I, I prefer renouncing on some uh, range to have a more solid and secure grip on my sword. The kisaki, or the point of my sword, is pointing at my enemy or at my opponent's throat. When I assume my hidari jodan, my left foot moves forward, and at the same time, I raise my hands. So I, both my feet and my hands move simultaneously. When I attack, normally my hands move first, my legs follow. Now, as far as the position of my elbow, sometimes I am criticized on this because some people tell me they are too open, perhaps. But again, the way I was taught, Jordan no Kamae, is that the elbows should be open in a natural and uh, in a natural way. So in a comfortable way. They shouldn't be too open, of course, but they shouldn't be too closed either. So you do need to find a uh, right middle spot, a sweet middle spot there. And to me, this is that. Now, it might be considered wrong for some people. I'm not sure if you see something wrong with it. Please correct me. But I believe that there must be a little bit of um, customization, if you will. I mean, at the end of the day, so this is my own personal way and this is the way I do Jodan no Kamae. Now, as far as the position of my fists, and normally they teach you to have your hand one fist away from your head, but again, in, there are Kenjutsu styles when that, where that's not the case and it's actually performed this way. And in fact, although in Kendo, normally you tend to, have to keep your hips closed when you are in Jodan no Kamae, there are some Kenjutsu styles that open completely the hips. 
So at the end of the day, I think they're two different uh, things. At the end of the day, there are styles, there are schools, and I think a person should be uh, free to either open or close the hips accordingly. And also the distance of the uh, hands should be different. At the, in fact, I, have, I remember seeing uh, Chiba Sensei, and if I find it, I will share it now. I remember Chiba Sensei teaching uh, actually to move the sort of position of, of the hands in your Jodan no Kamae slightly forward as to be quicker and closer to your opponent. So as you can see, little modification are possible. I think we should not stick too much to the perfect representation of the perfect rules and the perfect positions. I myself tend to keep a straight back, relaxed shoulders, and these are things I don't change. However, as far as the position of where my hands are, I do feel the freedom to move that depending on the situation. And I think that that's fine as far as sword play and martial arts are concerned. Now, as far as my footwork is concerned, and uh, of course I tend to use a kendo footwork, although not all the time, but this is how it works, as you know, you keep the toes of both feet looking facing forward and the heel of the rear foot is slightly uh, raised in kendo at least. I don't believe that this happens in kenjutsu. Now, um, I do this sometimes but I never really raise it too much to the point, for example, of my knee bending. I think that that would be in proper form and it would be actually rather negative. Now, in some Kenjutsu styles instead, we see that they keep both feet to the ground and I've heard um, Kendo uh, practitioners or instructors saying that that's a bad thing. Now, I don't think, again, it's a bad thing. I think it's a different style. It's a different situation. At the end of the day, in Kendo, you are not fighting to death. In a real situation where you're fighting to death, you, you wouldn't um, commit to the launch as much to the lounge as much as you would in kendo that often in kendo we see people using jodan no kamae who actually stop holding uh, or let the weapon go with their right hand to increase their reach because of course if you hold the weapon with one hand your reach will be higher you will be able to extend more but that's again another thing i don't think samurai did uh, when their life was at stake i think it's something that works in the sport martial art blend that kendo is So discussing again pros and cons, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Well, of course, as I said, it is true that your torso is exposed. So if we are considering unarmored combat, this could become a, a, a problem. But on the other hand, I mean, think about it. What are you protecting? You are protecting your arms and hands. Now, that is a very significant thing. And this is why it makes me feel safer than, for example, Chuda no Kamae or the, whatever the equivalent. I think it's Posta Breve in uh, Fiore dei Liberi. I don't remember the German. Uh, sorry, I don't remember the German term. If you know it, let me know. The hands are very important. Yes, if you go, if you manage to um, thrust me in the torso, uh, you will kill me, but uh, you will most likely kill me. But if you chop off three of my hands, uh, I won't be able to operate the weapon. So you might not kill me right away but you will kill me you know just a few seconds after that or I will have to, to run away or I will have to you know you will have won the and I will have lost again so I this is why I personally prefer as I said Jordan no Kamae and even more Hasso Gamae because I think Hasso Gamae is a good in between or in no Kamae is a good in between uh, between the advantages of Jordan and the advantages of Chudan I think Hasso no Kamae is the one that I feel more comfortable fighting with but there are some situations in which I prefer going switching into a Jordan and another thing to say is that Jordan no Kamae I think it's called the um, Kamae or the stance of fire and one of the reasons is that of course it's a stance that gives this idea of commitment. It's like, I'm here, I'm ready to either die or kill you. And it does have, I think, a certain psychological aspect. Um, it does make you look more imposing. It does make you look uh, more dangerous in a way. So I think that that is also something that should be taken into consideration. But most of all, an interesting story I'd like to tell you is about how uh, Kendo rules have changed. As you know, Kendo has... Um, a certain amount of targets okay you can hit the men you can hit the sayu men the, the the side of your men also sort of diagonally um you can score a point by hitting the kote or by hitting the door on both sides and of course you've got the thrust to the 
uh, throat. Now, there used to be also the possibility to score a point by thrusting or the tsuki to the torso, the torso. Now, they have removed that um, because the Jodan no Kamae practitioners were at a huge disadvantage because of that. And in fact, Jodan no Kamae was starting to disappear and everyone was starting to use Chudan. That was starting to become a little bit more dull. So they decided to remove one. That's one of the reasons why they decided to remove the tsuki to the torso, to the door, and they only allowed tsuki to the throat, which is actually harder to place the Natsuki to the door, particularly against a very experienced Jodan no Kamae practitioner. Now, this might look as if it's a, it's a proof that Jodan no Kamae is not safe, or that it's completely dis it's a huge disadvantage to fight in a Jodan no Kamae against someone who's using a Chudan no Kamae or a middle stance, but it's not so. So the reason why that's not the case is because you have to consider that this happened within Kendo rules. It's not that easy to score a point in Kendo, you do have to have correct form, you do have to shout the place you're attacking to show that it, you're doing it on purpose. However, in Kendo, there is one thing I don't like, which is similar to uh, Olympic fencing from that point of view, from that matter. And it's the idea of, for example, let's say that you, I am in Jodan no Kamae and you manage to uh, thrust with the uh, Kisaki uh, to my torso, okay? But a split second after that, I place a very strong and well-placed cut from uh, cutting from above, of course, to your neck or to your shoulder. I think we would be both dead, or maybe, maybe, if one of the two survives, it's gonna be me, depending on how deeply you could thrust into me with your sword. So, um, what this means is that if it wasn't for these rules that basically make uh, completely null my attack, if it wasn't for these rules, and in fact you do see sometimes some kendoka that just move their head so that you don't hit the head, which could be a point, but you actually hit here. But that makes absolutely no sense in a real duel, and this is why we shouldn't consider this sort of situations in kendo a proof or uh, that Jordan no Kamae doesn't work because it did work if these rules weren't there you would have to imagine and anyone who is committing to thrusting an opponent in Jordan no Kamae needs to keep in mind that the, that opponent could still chop his head off he could still cut his throat and he could still uh, be very dangerous also because even if you manage to thrust someone in the torso he doesn't automatically and immediately drop dead He's still a danger and you need to get out of there as quickly as you can. So the, he will place his cut. I will place my cut. And this is something that you need to keep in mind. An opponent in Jodan no Kamae is very dangerous. You will have to be able to read the situation. You will have to be able to understand which stance is the best stance to use in that moment. And also because please keep in mind that a stance, whether it be Hima or whether it be uh, Kenjutsu, a stance is both a starting position, a ready position, but also an ending position, a position in which you might find yourself after, uh, after a certain kind of cut. Also because in Kendo we know that they don't really use stepping attacks or stepping cuts as much. Uh, they tend to keep their feet forward most of the times, again similarly to Olympic fencing, but that's not something that happens in Kenjutsu and that definitely not something that should happen in Hima if we were to stick to the treatises alone. After all this, to give it a little conclusion, do I think that Jordan no Kamae is an effective stance? Yes. Is it my favorite stance? Well, it is my favorite stance if we consider just how badass it looks, but in terms of actual combat, it's not the stance that makes me feel more comfortable. So, in video games, yes, I will use Jordan no Kamae most of the times. In real life, if I'm sparring, uh, then I would I would have to consider uh, switching between Chudan, uh, Jordan and Hasso most of the times. And this is the question actually you might help me um, solve the answer. Why don't they use Hasso Gamae in Kendo now? Because I think it's, I mean, it has, it's a very good in-between between Jordan and Chudan. So why don't they use it? I have no idea. And uh, every time I spar with my friends, I find it to be a very good uh, Kamae indeed. Now there are, uh, I do understand that in Hima you have, as I said, Posta di Donna, I think Posta di Falcone maybe it's the one where it, like Fontag, like really up, but even Fontag has got several different possibilities I believe. I think all of these have their own pros and cons, this one being probably the one that generates more power when you cut and maybe the ones on the side which would be something that it's a, a little bit of an in-between and it's a bit more comfortable, it's a bit more safe, if you will, uh, particularly if, it, if an attack is coming towards your torso or your men. 
Alright Noble Ones, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. I have one question for you. What is your favourite stance of combat in swordplay? And if your favourite stance is the upper stance, which version do you prefer? Please let me know in the comments below. I will see you tomorrow for my next daily upload. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Sayonara!